And with three seconds left, Cleveland triggers in. James, two seconds, one second for the win! Oh! LeBron James delivers! That's a winner in Cleveland! Okay, so I have been teasing this video for a while, and I wish I had made it earlier. As much as I like to talk about how unbiased I am in the GOAT debate, pretty much every video that I have that mentions LeBron puts him in a negative light, while I've only put guys like Kobe and Jordan in a positive light. Not that I believe Kobe is one of the three greatest players ever, but he's just the one that I've talked about as well as LeBron and Jordan. This whole debate is something that I will elaborate on in the Goatmentary, which is a documentary about the GOAT debate that I will be releasing towards the end of... Honestly, I'm not sure. It's taking a long time. I just realized that I wrote it in the script that it'll be out at the end of September, but it is the end of September and uh yeah I'm not even halfway done you can check out the trailer for it here so enough of that let's get on with the video and i was simply frustrated with the man you call the best player on the planet, right, Shannon Sharp? He still is. Still is the best player on the planet for passing up the last shot inexplicably, just mind-bogglingly. And for the 1,000th time, I'm going to say it again, LeBron James, as great as he is, as gifted as he is, was not born with a clutch gene. I am sorry to say it, but it, it proved me right once again. The long-standing criticism for LeBron for his career, despite his greatness, has always been, well, he just isn't clutch. LeBron dominates the game until the last five minutes when the lights are on the brightest. LeBron shrivels into obscurity in the moment, with the game on the line, whatever other cliche you want. It's been said a million times that the difference between LeBron and Jordan is the clutch factor. Jordan takes the shot in the big moment and LeBron passes. Now this previous postseason really put a big hole in this narrative as it seemed like LeBron used this postseason as a campaign for his clutchness, hitting two game winners, one versus the Pacers that was basically a parody of his game winner versus the Magic, and a game winner versus the Raptors that was a really tough shot that he made look like a practice shot. He also simply just balled out in the fourth quarter of a lot of games this year and carried. Well, unfortunately for those who like to perpetuate this narrative, it has been proven that their argument is, well, just a narrative. In the last 10 seconds of the game, in the postseason, Michael Jordan is 7 for 15, which is 47%. Kobe, and it pains me to tell you this, as a Kobe stan, is 5 for 22, 23%. LeBron is 12 for 23, which is 52%. So LeBron shoots way better than Kobe on nearly an equal amount of attempts and shoots 5% than Michael Jordan on eight more attempts. So that throws out the narrative that one, LeBron is unwilling to shoot in the clutch because, well, he shot more than Jordan in the clutch. And it also removes the narrative that he doesn't make those shots because, well, he shoots better than Jordan as well in the clutch. Well, at least within the last 10 seconds because there really is no definitive way to define clutchness. But we can say for sure within the last 10 seconds in the playoffs, LeBron is statistically clutcher than Jordan, who is the definition of clutch. Last season specifically, LeBron led the NBA in clutch points per game, 4.5 per on 55.4% shooting, and in the clutch is defined as the last five minutes of the game where the point differential was five points or less, and that's according to stats.nba.com. This is also just talking about game winners, which isn't the entirety of clutchness, at least it shouldn't be seen that way. I'm not going to go into the whole debate of what is and isn't clutch, but what I will say is that the idea that the last shot is all that matters, which has been perpetuated by the whole LeBron isn't clutch myth, is stupid. Let's take an example from 
another Mythbusters video that I made a while ago, which is actually the only positive LeBron James video I made, which was the myth that Ray Allen saved LeBron's career. Basically in that video I gave Game 6 of the 2013 NBA Finals some context. In the fourth quarter of Game 6, LeBron scored 16 points and got two assists shooting 70% from the field. He also got a key block on Tim Duncan. But because Ray Allen hit his famous shot out of the corner, he's known for saving LeBron's legacy, despite the fact that LeBron was extremely clutch in this game, leading the Heat to the comeback. But because he didn't hit the last shot, he was choking in that game and Ray saved him. LeBron just didn't hit that shot, so naturally he wasn't being clutch. Another example of how LeBron is clutch is just how great he is in closeout games of his career. LeBron is 14 and 10 in elimination games, which isn't that amazing, but he definitely steps up himself in those games. He averages 33.7 points, 10.8 rebounds, and 7.5 assists in elimination games. 33.7 points per game is the highest in NBA history. Second is Jordan's 31.3 and Wilt Chamberlain's 31.1 is third. He averages 2.4 more points per game in elimination than Michael Jordan. So essentially when it comes to closing out a series, LeBron is statistically the most likely to hit the go-ahead basket and he's statistically the most likely to have a big game statistic wise. Now even if you use the argument that it's not all about stats, which is a valid argument that I somewhat agree with, even if you think that LeBron still isn't as clutch as Jordan Jordan or even Kobe, you have to admit at the very least that these stats prove that he is indeed clutch. Another criticism of him seems to be that he passes a lot for game winning or tying shots. To me that's really stupid because the best shot should be the one that's taken. Hero ball is great for legacy or a moment but not for good fundamental basketball. Jordan gets praise for giving Steve Kerr the last shot when it was clearly the right play to make but when LeBron passes up the last shot he's afraid of the moment. It's a little biased of an argument. So basically that is the myth busted, but I would like to dive into this narrative, how it started, and why it was started. Easily the biggest stain on LeBron's career is his performance in 2011. But in my opinion, 2011 is used incorrectly in arguments on both sides. When talking about LeBron's legacy, a lot of people on LeBron's side like to pretend that 2011 never happened. People like Nick Wright saying, let's just forget about 2011. And the Skip Baylesses of the world will find any excuse possible to bring it up. Look, it happened. It was a big stain on his career. It's a blemish and a massive example of choking under the pressure and just straight up being a failure as a basketball player. However, one final series shouldn't define his career in the way that people would like it to. And since 2011, LeBron has had no problem being clutch. One series does not define the entirety of his ability in the clutch for his career. I think the biggest reason clutchness or killer instinct is used against LeBron is because those aspects of a player's games are a lot less tangible than things like points and rebounds and so on. So when people try to put LeBron down, they look at his stats and see that they clearly can't knock that, look at his efficiency, can't knock that, his finals record, well you definitely can criticize that, uh, the versatility of his game, can't knock it, the defense besides for the past two years, can't knock it, no criticism can be made there. LeBron impresses in every new numerical aspect of the game, so those who want to belittle the legacy of LeBron James choose the one thing that isn't mired in numbers. They look at guys like Jordan and Kobe, who are players known for their clutch ability, and say, hey, LeBron isn't known for that, so LeBron isn't clutch. The real root of this myth is the never-ending greatest of all time debate. I said that the myth of LeBron not being clutch was used as a way to belittle LeBron's legacy. Well, the reason people are so happy to belittle LeBron's legacy is because so many people, when debating who the best player of all time is, like to use fake narratives to bring down one player so that the other seems better. Say we're talking about LeBron versus Jordan exclusively, those who say that Jordan is better than LeBron would say that he isn't clutch, and those who say that LeBron is better than Jordan would like to say that Jordan had 
had weak competition and was guarded by plumbers, which is another myth that I've busted in this Mythbusters series. And this myth is a symptom of a longer problem within the NBA community that is wildly annoying. You can say that Jordan is better than LeBron without disrespecting LeBron's ability, talent, and clutchness and vice versa. Don't belittle one player's greatness simply because you think another player is better. If it wasn't for this everlasting debate, I'm sure that the idea that LeBron isn't clutch wouldn't even become a narrative. Because what reason is there to say that LeBron isn't clutch other than to elevate other players who are considered traditionally clutch over him? So in conclusion, LeBron is not only clutch in the game winner sense, being 12 of 23 in the last 10 seconds of the playoffs, and just to be clear, those are games where the shots make a difference in the game. It's not counting shots made when they're down 10, you know, just because someone in the comment section will probably want to say that, which I'm sure they still will because no one makes it this far in the video. He also puts up better closeout game numbers than any other player in NBA history. So the idea that LeBron isn't clutch is not only a myth, but it's also very reasonable to say that he's one of the clutchest players of all time. So next time you hear something like LeBron isn't clutch, maybe look at your body biases and question why you may agree with that because LeBron isn't clutch myth busted